Hey everyone, and welcome to a unit review of the Death Knights, plus a little channel update at the end. He comes from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I've gone further since last video, and no worries, I won't spoil anything, and I hope no one else spoils anything below. But the Death Knight! In Three Houses, he's like super scary. If I see him, I'm minding my own business. But in Heroes, it's a different story. I should mention that he's a Grand Hero Battle unit, so he's free. This review will go over his stats, skill synergy, allies, counters, some build ideas, and answer should you invest your Holy Grails. Let's begin. Make them beg. Death Knight, the Reaper, rides into battle as a Lance Cavalier. That's a very saturated class, and the Death Knight uh, kind of excels? Eh? Taking a look at his stats, they don't give off a powerful vibe, except for his attack at base 35. That's pretty good with a 16 might lance, which pushes him to 51 attack. 51 attack is good, but nowadays we see a lot of units who can reach that with ease. But those are banner units. There aren't too many free units who can reach 50 attack, so Death Knight is good in that aspect. His HP is pretty solid, but his speed is bad. 25 speed is not good, but you can try to make something out of it. His lance does give him some speed, so maybe? Not recommended though. His defense and res are somewhat close, he's got decent mixed bulk. His sturdy defense is good, but I'm not sure if it deserves to be called amazing. It reaches the good threshold, but not the great threshold. His BST is in line with recent Lance Cavaliers, meaning he has higher BST compared to launch units. For a comparison, let's take a look at another Grand Hero Battle unit, Burkut. Stats are very similar. Burkut makes up for his lack of res with his lance. The attack difference is concerning though, not to mention that the Death Knight gets all stat buffs from his lance, whereas Burkut only gets a res buff. But this Burkut is kind of outdated. Let's take a look at Fallen Burkut. Their HP and attack is the same. This Burkut sacrificed his speed into his defense and res. At least with the Death Knight, you had a chance to make a speed build. With Burkut, nah. At this point, you have to compare the lances and see who is more useful. Burkut gets to use this encounter at the cost of his allies' HP. And there are some units who can make use of that damage for desperation, vantage, etc. However, there are some units who don't want that damage. For instance, Breaker units, Luin and Marita, Vengeful Fighter, Special Fighter, Wary Fighter, all those don't want that damage. On the other hand, Death Knight punishes foes for using invisible buffs by buffing himself and stopping their follow up. Personally, I like the Death Knight more because I use armor units and breaker units, and yeah, I don't want that damage. Now for skill synergy. His stats were good, but his skills are. Eh. Most of the skill synergy is kind of a reach. Like, he falls under 50% HP, he teleports thanks to escape route and then he can give his allies close guard buffs, or use Blazing Flame to weaken the foe and surrounding foes, or if they have a bonus, he can use the Scythe to take them on. Speaking of his Scythe, the Death Knight comes with the Scythe of Sariel. I'm pretty sure that's the correct pronunciation. Sariel means the Prince of God, which is pretty cool. The Scythe accelerates the special trigger, making his Blazing Flame 3 cooldown, and if the foe has a visible bonus from Rally, Hone, or Extra Movement, then Death Knight gets plus 4 to all stats during combat, and the foe cannot make a follow up. Let's say you're dealing with both fighter Zelgius, and he has Armor March. The Scythe will give Death Knight plus 4 to all stats, and Zelgius can't make use of both fighters' guaranteed follow up. It's not phase restricted, which is very nice, and it heavily punishes people who use a lot of buffs on their units. It's good that he punishes buff units, but here lies a problem. Let's say a blue lance unit gets plus 6 to all their stats, from whatever combo. Tactic, Wave, Legendary Azura, Mordecai, and Summer Fiora, whatever. When they face the Death Knight, the Death Knight will get plus 4 to all of his stats. But he's still facing unit with plus 6 to all stats, and they're still eligible to get more buffs from drives and more. Yes, the Death Knight is strong, he has high attack, solid HP, and defense, but taking on a fully buffed unit is no easy task. Another problem is that the Scythe's all stat buffs are during combat and won't help Blazing Flame which procs before combat. For allies, strong tanks like Lucas are great, they can make use of that close guard. Death Knight wants higher attack to deal more damage with Blazing Flame, New Year's Reed with his Hone Attack 4 is great for that. This Luin one is kind of hard to explain, most of the time mages will fight other mages, and most mages have low defense. When Death Knight gets escape route, he can jump over to an ally and take down the foe, 
with low defense. Weird, I know. And Mordecai and Summer Fiora have a great combo where they can buff an ally with plus 6 to all stats. Combined with Death Knight Scythe, he gets plus 10 to all stats. That's really good. As for counters, green magic units who would double him are dangerous. Death Knight may be able to stop Grima's Vengeful Fire follow up, but in general, green dragons are a bad matchup for Death Knight. There are units who work without buffs and do fantastic. One of them is Legendary Ephraim. Attack debuffers like Arvis and Garnif prevents the Death Knight from doing lots of damage with Blazing Flame. Time for builds. First build, Angry Death. It's a simple budget set with Fury and attack plus 3. With that combo, he reaches 57 attack, which is great for dealing damage with Blazing Flame. 33 defense and 30 res is very good for taking on hits of all kinds. And the Fury recoil will help him reach escape route so he can run away if he needs to. I'm also pretty sure that the escape route is not saying, Oh, you can't run away from death. No, it's the fact that this guy teleports away a lot. Second build, Ares. Since Brazen gives buffs during combat, it's better to use Draconic Aura than Blazing Flame. But with double Brazen attack defense, you can also run Bonfire. It's not too hard to enter Brazen range, and with plus 14 defense, Death Knight can make it down to escape route range somewhat safely, then he can teleport to his allies and use the plus 14 attack to destroy his foes. Third build, a quick death. This set is pretty simple. The Scythe lowers Bonfire to 2 cooldown, then Quick Impulse reduces it to 1, and now all Death Knight needs to do is to enter combat in the enemy phase, the foe attacks, with Steady Stance he can take a better hit and increase Bonfire's damage. Now, this is more of a one-time thing since Quick Impulse only activates at the start of turn 1. Fourth build, the Weight of a Life. This works pretty much like the other sets, just throw him in there for enemy phase. The Scythe lowers Ignis cooldown to 3, then they attack, and Steady Stance 4 gives him a lot of defense and a guard effect. When he retaliates, hopefully he has enough attack to get Heavy Blade, and then on his second hit, he procs Ignis powered by Steady Stance 4. Good stuff! 5th build, Desperate to Live. With high attack units, the Death Blow Desperation Brash Assault combo is like the uncle they don't mind having around. It's not the first person they think of when talking about uncles, but it's in the back of their mind. Of course, you can run Brave Axe, but I really like the Scythe and accelerating the special, and preventing the foe's follow up is very nice. With Death Blow and the Scythe, he gets plus 10 attack, which is great. Throw in Death Blow 4 for more fun. 6th build, a quick death, wait, no, I already did that already, um, uh, legendary, a Lucina, I almost said a Zira there for some reason, right? Because Lucina can make use of attack speed link really well, and Death Knight can, um, make good use of it too. I said that you can make something out of his speed, and here we go, he deals massive damage with double brazen and attack speed link. He can double and prevent doubles with all those same buffs. Not to mention that a scythe also gives him another plus 4. With everything in effect, he will have plus 24 attack and speed. That's 75 attack and 49 speed. Good stuff, right? So, should you invest your holy grails into the death knight? On the yes side, he's got a cool weapon for punishing units who use visible buffs. He has close guard to fodder. His BST is higher than launch lance cavaliers. He's got good mixed defenses and high attack and his attack art makes it look like he wants to offer you a good deal. Probably car insurance. Or life insurance. Life sounds better. On the no side, the Lance Cavalier is an oversaturated class, and you might have invested into someone already, like Dimitri, Juan, Camus. His speed is poor, and he needs a lot of investment. His defense and res are good, but not great. Escape route is meh, and not too many units can make use of an AoE special. Perhaps you're using your Holy Grails for some other units, Linus, Burger King, Valdelfia, Samriogir, Kronia, Camus. Personally, I'd say no, because there are just too many other good Lance Cavaliers, and there's just so many other Holy Grail units who you know will excel well. Thanks for watching this review. Subscribe for more Fire Heroes content and leave a like. Actually, on the topic of content, I want to do a quick channel update. With school coming up and I finally got a part-time job, I don't have much time for videos. I really do like making videos and talking about characters and talking to all of you, but I still want to focus more on school and work. So moving forward, there will be less videos? Banner reviews are up in the air, 
it depends on how much time I have since banner reviews take much more time than single unit reviews. I don't know what direction this channel will go, but I guess that's the fun of it. And I hope you continue to support me. So thank you for more than just watching this video. You can follow me on Twitter at exile underscore Thai for any updates and my reaction to the Blue Lions routes. No spoilers, don't worry, but the story is breaking my heart. With all that, stay hydrated folks, and you know what? Keep living. Keep going. You got this.